The creative industries are going through a complete revolution at the moment. And that's because the very way that we create content, media, art, imagery, music, it's all changing drastically due to artificial intelligence. When I realized this after 15 years as a filmmaker, content creator, and photographer, I felt physically sick because the implications are just so huge. Today, I'd like to talk about my own experience of how a single AI generated image changed my perspective on what's possible and where we're heading, and also why I believe this technology presents a golden opportunity for the next generation of creatives and the next generation of storytellers. But first, I'd like you to think about the way that you like to create and the tools that you like to use. Maybe like me, you enjoy picking up a camera or a paintbrush. Maybe it's a guitar to play some music, whatever it is. Now, unfortunately, studies show that as we get older, it gets harder and harder to continue creating. In fact, by the time we're adults, only one in 10 people will regularly create anything at all. And there's lots of reasons for this. Perhaps your camera breaks and you can't afford to go and buy a new one. Or, you know, you don't get the formal training that you feel you need to be a great painter and you stop. Or your bandmates move away and now your guitar is just sitting in the garage gathering dust. These are all barriers to stop you from creating. As Pablo Picasso once said, every child is an artist. The problem is staying an artist when you grow up. And I think a lot of us can relate to that on some level. But what if there was a new way to create new tools that weren't so impacted by these limitations, by these barriers? Because that's what I believe that AI is offering. In fact, with AI to create, all you need is an internet connection and an idea. Some key characteristics of AI creative platforms are speed. We can create music tracks. We can create videos, imagery in just a few seconds. Accessibility. These are inherently designed to be very easy to use. To use them, you just need to type in what you'd like to see or create. And quality. Uh, I mean, to be honest, the output that we get with AI tools now is largely indistinguishable from that of the traditional method. And here's an example of that. Now, these two are going viral this week, not because they're the hottest, latest uh, TEDx speakers going around, but because they are entirely AI generated. They do not exist at all. We talk about those characteristics, speed. I mean, these were created in a few seconds using a free AI image platform and the quality. I mean, you can see even right down to the fine details, the Google, you can see there on the badge, extreme realism. When I realized what was possible and the direction that we were heading in, it's a day that I'll never forget. December 3rd, 2022. See, up until that point, all of my creative projects followed a familiar path. You'd have an idea, you'd travel to a location, you'd get the shot, the interview, the video, then you'd go away and you'd edit it. You'd polish it up and release it. The whole thing could take a lot of time, days, weeks, even many months between start and finish. And you'd face challenges all along the way. But what happened on December 3rd, 2022 changed my entire perspective on this and the future of creating. It started like this. I'd planned to head down to the beach at sunrise with my drone to get some shots of the surfers paddling out against the early morning light. But as so often happens, the universe had different ideas and my car wouldn't start. So by the time I finally got down to the beach, I'd miss sunrise and, you know, it's too cold, gray and windy to even send up my drone at all. And this was the only photo I got for my troubles. So I went home, licking my wounds, feeling defeated, and slumped down on the couch, pulled out my phone, and started scrolling. And I came across something called an AI image generator. Now, keep in mind, this was before ChatGBT and these other AI tools really exploded into the mainstream. An AI image generator. It promised that you put a text prompt in, and it would create the same visual 
as you just typed in. I thought, okay, let's give this a go. And I adjust the text prompt in mind. A beautiful beach sunrise, drone shot, surfers, and I hit enter. And this was the image that was generated. Now, I was absolutely flawed. Yes, because of the quality. Yes, because of the realism. Yes, because of the comprehension, the way the light hits the top of the waves before falling down into the shade of the ocean. But more than anything, I was flawed by what this image represents. And that's a new way to create without limits, because this was able to take the concept from my mind, bring it to life in a way that I wasn't able to with my hands, with my drone, in the more traditional, the more manual way of creating. It was a real line in the sand moment for me, and I thought that it really was going to change the way that we create in future. And I came up with an experiment to test if I was right. A bit of a controversial one because no one was really talking about this in my circles or the creative industries. And that experiment was to see if I could enter this into a photography competition. See if it could slip by unnoticed. And lo and behold, it did. It fooled the judges and it won. It became the world's first AI-generated image to win a photography contest. Now, of course, I came clean and returned the cash prize. But then the message started spreading around, going right around the world. You know, it made headline news in uh, America. It made headline news in Brazil, in Berlin. And then the criticism started rolling in off the back of that. Wave of fury. Now, I understand why photographers, why creatives were angry about this. Because just like me, they were having to come to terms with this new technology and what it meant for them and their profession. But my intention was never to scare creatives. It was more to show them what was possible. This is a new way to create. Now, amongst the criticism, I received a very special email from a man named James. And James explained that he used to be a photographer, but due to a degenerative disease, he was no longer able to get out and shoot anymore. James saw my little experiment and was skeptical at first, but decided he'd give it a go himself to see if it could help him to scratch that creative itch in a way that hadn't been possible for him in years. And he found that it definitely could. He was able to play with different scenes, different lighting, different subjects, in a way that he just hadn't been able to due to his degenerative disease. Now, this isn't the same thing as photography. I'm not saying it's the same thing as photography, but it is a new way to tell stories, a new way for us to tap into that self-expression side of ourselves. And in a case like James, I think if you can give someone back that creative freedom, that's a positive thing. Now, I mentioned things are moving fast. Well, let's just have a look at how fast. This is our friend from earlier, completely AI generated. Well, let's take an AI video platform for a spin. It's incredible, right? The level of realism that we're able to achieve now is quite frankly stunning. These tools are always learning, they're always updating, they're always getting better. And this is the same right across the board, across all of the creative tools that we're seeing at the moment. They just keep getting better and better and better. Now that's staggering. What I think is even more staggering is the rate of adoption for these tools. And this really is showcased when you compare it to the rate of adoption for photography. See, photography started all the way back in 1826. That's when the first photograph was taken. Over the next 150 years, 15 billion photographs were captured. 15 billion photographs in 150 years. Now, how many years do you think it's taken AI image generators to generate 15 billion images? Less than one. You can compare the feat, not in years, but in months. It's clear we're living in a new age of content creation. But where does that leave us? The humans, the creatives in all of this. And should I stop learning about filmmaking, photography, music, or any of the other creative pursuits? No, absolutely not. In my mind, I think it's the opposite. Because these are still tools at the end of the day, and tools need direction, human direction. It's no different to this. 
we did an experiment and we passed this camera through the audience, who would it be? Best shots. Well, it would be the people who have an understanding of what a good image looks like. They'd understand how to take a good shot, the technical elements, lighting, composition. They'd understand visual storytelling, emotion. They'd have a story to tell and use the tool to tell it. It's no different with these AI tools. Here's an example of a very simple text prompt. A man sitting on a bench. Now this sets the scene, but it doesn't really do anything else. We can't tell if he's happy or sad or anything really about him. It doesn't tell the audience how they should feel. What happens when we layer this with emotion and technical elements? A devastated man sits alone on a bench, black and white colors, high contrast, minimalist, isolated. Now we're touching on the emotion, the color, the lighting, the perspective. We're really starting to tell a story a lot more. Any great text prompt will touch on these two things. They will include both the storytelling aspect, they'll have a message they're trying to convey, and they'll also have the technical elements, how they want to tell that story. When you combine those two, you can tell a story in pretty much any way that you want to, in any style, focusing on any subject with these AI tools. So what are some predictions for the future? Well, firstly, the solo content creators will rise. And what I mean by that, well, here's an example. Mark my words, before the end of the year, we will see the first feature-length film created entirely by a single person. And secondly is personalization. As we use these tools, as we learn them, they will learn us. That's why it's more important to focus on the way that you like telling stories, the style that you like to use, which will be different to my style or other people's. Maybe it's cartoons, maybe it's highly cinematic videos, whatever it is, work on your style. And the more that you work with these AI platforms, they will learn you and help you to refine that style as well. But of course, with any new technology, there are downsides, there are some risks. Ethics, copyright, originality, there are huge conversations going on at the moment. And to be honest, they probably require their own TED talk. But I'll touch on a few of those risks and downsides. Firstly is misinformation. In my opinion, this is going to be the biggest downside to AI tools. It's going to be harder and harder to believe what we're seeing. Is it real? Is it AI generated? A lot of people ask me, how can I tell if something's generated by AI or not? And to be honest, in a lot of ways, you can't. It's just getting harder and harder. The tip I'd have there is just to be skeptical and not believe everything that you see online. Next is scams. If a friend or family member calls you asking for money, keep in mind this may be part of a sophisticated scam. What has protected people in the past is having a code word um, or having a piece of information that you can ask them that only you two would know the answer to. It's a good way to combat against these face generators, facial um, generators uh, and cloning and also voice cloning as well. This technology is getting really, really powerful. So having a code word that you share with your friends and family and also just asking for some key bits of information that only you two would know is a good way to protect yourself. And lastly is deep fakes. The Australian government has just made it a criminal offence to share or create and uh, distribute damaging deep fakes. So keep in mind that one if you decide to make one as a joke. Um, and also if someone makes a damaging deep fake of you, keep in mind that there are websites online that can help you to get them taken down as well. It's clear that we're living in a bizarre, fun, exciting, new age at the moment. And no one knows what's going to be possible in six months, a year, 10 years from now. But what I do know is we can be masters of this new medium, all of us. And that's what makes this technology so exciting, the accessibility, the fact that we can all access these tools. When it comes to creativity, I'd like you to think back to those limitations that you might have felt in the past. Think about the different ways that you might have been stopped because those limitations may not be there anymore. So I'd like to ask you, what's something that you've always wanted to create? I can't wait to see it. Thank you.